Disclaimer. Hi guys, intern here. Now, I have been meaning to upload more proper edited content, more scripted content for the channel for quite a while now. But I can't do that because I got a job recently and it has taken up 90% of my time. I genuinely just don't have the energy to put into scripted content at the moment. I'm still working on some stuff like that in the background. But it's going to be hard for me to do it on a regular occasion. As you guys know, I record everything. I edit everything. Everything on this channel is all 100% me. And because it's all 100% me, it, it makes things kind of hard for me when things get busy like they are right now. So, yeah, man, the unscripted keep me going. You know, it's it's not hard to edit. I just I just use the raw audio. I find pictures. It's It's not so much for me. And it still allows me to give you guys good content at the end of the day, you know. So bear with me. I'm still going to try and get some more proper vids out. But just bear with me and see with the unscripted for now. Better days are coming, I promise. I need to get me an editor one of these days, man. But until then. All right. So today we're talking about, or I'm talking about rather, next season's rookies. Because... In my opinion, at least, I think 2023, and I think most people believe this as well, 2023 will have the most talented rookie class since 2019. I'm not saying they are as talented as 2019. I'm saying this is the best rookie class since 2019. Yeah? Capiche? Yeah. So we have Oscar Piastri going to McLaren. We supposedly have Logan Sargent going to Williams, which... I guess is all but guaranteed at this point because the odds of him leaving Abu Dhabi without a super license are very low. He has a lot of points right now and he's third in the championship. So it's almost virtually a lock. And we have Nick DeVries going to Alpha Tauri, right? And these three have had obviously three completely different careers. But when you look at how all of them got here, I'm genuinely satisfied you know i feel like this is one of them seasons where everyone that's coming into the sport th th there's no like pay driver aura around them there's no you don't deserve this seat around them you look at all three of these guys and they they're they're three very talented racing drivers that have proven their worth and genuinely at least in my opinion deserve the chance to race in formula one so I'm going to go through all three of them. I'm going to start with Piastri because he's the easiest one to justify. He is the 2021 Formula 2 champion. He's the 2020 Formula 3 champion. He's the 2019 Formula Renault Euro Cup title champion. This guy won three titles back to back to back. And in 2022, he was a reserve driver for Alpine. As well as McLaren, because Alpine loaned him to McLaren for a bit. In that, If you guys remember the announcement that Alpine made saying, Oh, wow, you know something? If Daniel Ricciardo can't make it to Bahrain, then we will, allow us, we, will, we will allow McLaren to put Piastri in their car. And it's very funny that they did that, considering what ended up happening. And Piastri ended up signing with McLaren, leaving Alpine in the dust. And he's the guy that's going to be replacing Daniel Ricciardo for 2023. It goes without saying that he deserves to be in Formula 1. He had a very, very, very good season in Formula 2 in his first time of asking. You know, he won six races, which is a lot for Formula 2 standards. Because in Formula 2, there, there's so many different people that can win a race, you know. And it wasn't even just the fact that he was winning races in F2 that made me impressed with Piastri. It was his poles. He got a lot of poles in F2. So many poles he got in F2. And not just poles, but like poles in a row. You know, he, he got them. He got five poles in 2021. And those are like proper qualifying poles. I'm not talking about he qualified 10th and started a sprint race on pole. He genuinely, in the proper qualifying sessions in F2 that season, won pole five times. So, obviously, the race pace is there, as shown by his wins. And the, the qualifying pace is also there. The biggest gripe with Piastri that I guess people are going to have is, well, maybe two, 
is one with him replacing Ricardo in the fashion he did publicly rejecting Alpine. It's going to raise his expectations way, way, way higher than than if he was in a situation where he had just come into F1 straight out of the F2 out of the F2 title. Right. But with with all this fanfare and all this controversy regarding him coming into the sport, there's just going to be so many more eyes on him now. You know, people are going to expect so much from him because ever since that title, everyone's like, Piastri this, Piastri that. We need Piastri in the Williams. We need Piastri in the LP. And everyone says they need Piastri in F1. And now they've got it. So what are they going to get? Is Piastri going to hold his own against Lando Norris? Is he going to get wiped the same way Ricardo's been wiped these past two seasons? It's He, to me, is going to be under the most pressure. Because he's debuting in the best car of the three rookies and he's taking on the toughest teammate of the of the three rookies and he's filling the biggest shoes as well because Sargent's replacing latifi and i guess devries replacing gasly are still big shoes but ricardo's a big name so you know it, that's where i'm at right now with piastri but if his junior career is anything to go by it's 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 reminiscent of george George Russell and even maybe Charlotte Claire, you know, just guys that really dominated in the juniors. Piastri's done that. Even though in 2020 for F3, I don't think he was the best. I don't think he was the better driver that season as it regarded him versus Sargent, which I'll get to later. But the bottom line is he's still a champion in F3 and F2 and Formula Renault. And I'm very excited to see what he does. My thing with Piastri is I always say this. If he comes into this McLaren seat and does just as mid as Ricardo is doing, it's still a win for McLaren because they're not paying Piastri boatloads of money. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna get mediocre results from a guy, then at least don't pay him much. Because that was always my problem with Ricardo. It wasn't just that Ricardo was driving like mid. He was being paid millions, 20 million, I believe, and bringing results like that. And you pay that much money to a guy and he ends up costing you constructors championship stand he he costs you in the constructors championship then you know it's it's not a it, it's it's a loss because you're paying him and you're getting less money than you expected to get from the constructors at the end of the season or the money you thought you could have gotten had he driven better so that's going to be the shoes that Piastri is going to have to fill and hopefully supersede so yeah, that's going to be his problem. Off to Pogan Pargent. I rate Logan Sargent very highly. I think he's a demon. I think he's very, very good. I think he was the best driver of 2020 as it regards F3. And he had... For, for him to have had so much bad luck that season and still almost win the championship was insane to me. I think Sargent was insane in 2020. Insane, right? Then he had to do another season of F3 because he didn't win the title. He had to drive a Charouz for one year. Still managed to get 7th in the championship and win them a race even though they're mid. And that's when people were like, alright, if you, if you didn't believe in Sargent last year, you have to believe in him now. right? And then you look at what he's been doing this season in F2. His teammate is Liam Lawson, who we know is a serious driver. Right? And he is beating him quite convincingly too. And that to me legitimizes Sargent because I also rate Liam Lawson very highly. And I feel like Liam Lawson's one of the main people in F2 who's... I, I feel as though his, his statistics and his results definitely do not show his talent. Liam Lawson is one of those guys that you have to watch to understand how good he is. If you just look at his results, you'll think he's mid. But when you watch him drive, you know he's a serious driver. And I think Liam Lawson is definitely F1 worthy. And it's a shame he's not going to get a seat. It could happen in the future. But I, I, I feel like them taking De Vries over him kind of puts the nail in the coffin that he's just not one of their priorities right now. And that's a shame. But going back to Sargent... He's third in the championship this season in his rookie year. And obviously, that's how Yuki Tsunoda came into the sport. He finished third in the, in F2 in 2020. 
and Red Bull immediately put him into the Alpha Tauri for 2021. And it's going to be a similar situation here with Sargent. Because I'll say this much, he isn't third in the championship by a lot. If he has a bad Abu Dhabi weekend, he could probably even finish like sixth or even seventh. He could finish very low if he has the absolute worst weekend of his life. But if he just has a regular weekend where he gets like proper top fives or just even sixth or lower, just getting points, there's no doubt in my mind he'll definitely get the super license and he'll definitely get a seat in F1 next season. And... This is very good for Williams because I've always been critical of the Williams driver program. I always felt like there were people in there that just had no business being there. Jack Aitken was in his mid-twenties and wasn't really all that good in F2. Nizani speaks for himself. He's almost he's he's push he's literally pushing 30. And Jamie Chadwick, they've never done anything with. She's been in W series for three years. Like the, the, when when I looked at the when I looked at those guys, I was like, nah, this isn't a serious driver program in my opinion. Then they got Dan Tictum and I was like, all right, here we go. A demon, a proper driver. Dan Tictum was signed to the Williams Driver Academy. Didn't stay there long. They dropped him and I was like, all right, all right, great. Back back to mid. But then they get Sargent. And I look at Sargent's junior career up to this point and I think he might be their best investment. Do I think Tictum is a better driver than Sargent? It's a weird comparison. I think you could definitely argue it. I think they're both very talented. You can't go wrong with either. But the bottom line is they have Sargent right now and he's very good. And Latifi has been here for three years, has not shown much progression at all. He's been thoroughly beaten by Russell, beaten by Albon, just not showing any speed. There's no real reason to continue with him. But Sargent, when you look at what Sargent has done in the junior series, you're like, this is a guy, this is a guy you can build off of. This is a guy that could be the future of Williams. Or even another F1 team that, 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 that looks at his results and thinks, you know something, he could cook here. You know? P3 in F2. Yeah. Albon is going to be his teammate next season. Albon finished P3 in F2. In 2018. And he came to F1. And he did okay. He's doing alright for himself. So so yeah. I think Sargent could, could have similar fortune. Similar fortune. Who's next? And the last one we have here is Nick DeVries. Nick De, my relationship with Nick DeVries. As it regards his abilities. I've been, it's, it's, been, it's been such a fluctuating thing. Because. I wanted him in the sport at one point. Then I was like, you know, I don't really care if he races in F1 or not anymore. And now that he's getting the seat, I'm like, you know what? Good. I, f I find it very important that F2 champions... I I I've always been of the impression that an F2 champion should at least compete in one Formula 1 Grand Prix in their entire life. You know? One. Even if it's like as a reserve, you replace somebody. You never actually get a full-time seat. I just find it important that an f2 champion races in f1 even if they don't last there forever just get just get a drive and we got that with De Vries this year and obviously because alex alban had his appendicitis couldn't race in monza De Vries was there he had already driven for them earlier in the season in i believe spain i think spain is where he did the fp1 for williams and he was already there doing FP1s for Aston Martin in Monza that same weekend. So they just said, yo, Nick, come over here. You've driven this Williams before. We need you just for this one race. Can you help us? And he did wonderfully. He scored a point. Two, actually. He came, where did he finish? He finished ninth? Yeah, P9, I believe. Scored himself two points on his Formula 1 debut. And obviously there is some luck to it because... You know, if if he didn't, if he had, had he debuted at any other track where the Williams just wasn't good, he would have had a terrible race. He'd have been in the back because the Williams just isn't that good a car. But the stars aligned for him and he managed to get his debut at a track that actually benefited the car he was driving. And he held his own. 
he held his own and he did fantastic Distri- he beat latifi easily you know he 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 drove very well and if you're a team out there and you're looking for a guy that that that's going to replace one of your outgoing drivers and you see the Vries do that you're like there's a guy I can build off of and Alpha Tauri have taken the risk on him and the Vries is kind of a weird choice for Alpha Tauri because you you'd expect Alpha Tauri to stay within the Red Bull Junior program but they've gone out and they've poached a Mercedes guy because Nick DeVries is ob- obviously, you know, he's affiliated with Mercedes. He won Formula E. He won the Formula E championship with them in 2021. He's tested for them in different testing sessions that they've had in the middle of the years. Maybe he's done tire tests for them. I believe he's done the young drivers test for them in 2020 as well. He's been with Mercedes for three years now. This is year three, right? And... Red Bull have gone and they've they've taken him, and it it's it's a it's a big career move for him because if he does well here at Alpha Tauri, beats Sonoda, and Red Bull decide they don't want Perez anymore in the coming years, like at the end of Perez's contract in what the end of twenty twenty four, De Vries could easily slot in. B Max's teammate, you have a double Dutch lineup at Red Bull. But it's all dependent on how Nick performs. And if his debut is anything to go by, he's definitely a capable driver. A versatile one too. He's an FE champion. He's done pretty well in LMP2 cars in endurance racing as well. Very, very good driver. Very underrated driver. And obviously he's a Formula 2 champion. So, yeah man. Good crop of rookies we're getting next season, man. Serious drivers. Serious drivers, you know? What well, in 2019 we got we got who? Russell, got Albon, we got Norris. We got Giovinazzi in his first full season. Kind of mid. And we got Leclerc in Ferrari, even though he wasn't a rookie. He had already done a season, but you get what I'm saying. 2019. Mm, 2019 was really the changing of the guard in F1, because we got like three three dudes that ended up kind of defining the years afterwards even if you add Leclerc in there because that was his first season in a serious situation right obviously this rookie lineup isn't going to rival that one talent wise I think you'd take Russell Albon Norris any day over these guys but these guys these guys still have some juice to them we got two F2 champions a guy that should have been an F3 champion. A guy that's going to finish top three in F2 if all goes well. You know? Very, very good crop of rookies. And I can't wait to see what they do. And how do you think they're going to do? Leave a comment down below. I don't normally ask people to leave comments. I really should do that more. Subscribe to Intern Talks Wheel. Leave a comment down below. What are your expectations for the three rookies that are joining the sport? I'd love to know. I'd love to talk with you in the comment section down below. But until next time, I'm Intern. My name is Intern. I talk wheel. And I'm signing out. Thank you very much for watching the video. And make sure to leave a like. We are out.